Hey there, it's Mike with Kinney Ikenik Bees. Um, so today I'm pretty excited to make this video. Um, and it really is a fundamental uh, topic. It's a bit controversial, which it really honestly shouldn't be. And I honestly believe that people that are dead set on their way, you really shouldn't listen to their advice, honestly. They're not open-minded to other solutions, um, especially ones backed by science and scientific studies. You might not want to listen to their advice anymore. So. That brings us to, to the topic today of um, insulated hives. And you probably found this from the, from the uh, title. Um, I'm not even sure what it's gonna be yet, but to me, it's probably something on why you should throw away your traditional Langstroth hive, because honestly, um, if you have the ability, you should, because there's a better way. Um, I have spent a lot of time educating myself on hives, different types of hives, for obvious reasons. This is my livelihood. We make money selling bees, raising bees, and the honey. And so if there's a product out there that can help you with that, uh, not only from a colony standpoint, uh, in regards to the what the beekeeper needs, like quick buildup um, and efficient bees so that therefore they're gathering as much honey as they can and um, tending to their brood as best as possible, I'm all for it. And so one of the things I did when I first got into beekeeping was, um, which was six or seven years ago now, is I couldn't quite understand why we were putting hives in woodenware that is uninsulated. And then we have to take all these special measures in the winter time uh, to make sure the bees don't die. Because as you know, the standard wood Langstroth hive just roll them through a cold climate winter anywhere they're gonna die they don't do that in trees and I mean they just simply don't and the reason is this insulation and so today we're gonna talk about insulated hives and so we we're a dad and dealer we don't even sell I mean go on our website kinneybees.com we do not sell woodenware um, for a couple reasons one they're just, it, there just is a better option. And so uh, we came along and we are now a dealer of a company from Australia called Hive IQ. Um, it's insulated hive, it's, um, this is it here put together. We're gonna do an intro on the system itself, how to put it together um, and, and, and painting it, which will be what we're doing in a few minutes. But I wanna touch on uh, the benefits of an insulated hive and and on top of it a condensing hive and so an insulated hive is anything that ultimately is insulated and so bees as you know don't hibernate in winter um, and require a quite a warm temperature in their hive to survive and there's some new research out there that's indicating that clustering isn't necessarily a um, normal response it's a response to bad conditions and there is some research that shows that bees really don't cluster all that often in a tree hollow and it's because they're heavily insulated if you think about it from a tree's perspective you know think of like a you know a two foot wide oak tree you know it's going to have walls that are you know four or five inches thicker thicker and then that cavity uh, and somewhere mid tree and so on top it has from a science or from a measurement standpoint pretty much an infinite insulation rating which is expressed in R. Um, home building you know you use R to determine the um, insulation the insulation capacity of the material that you're using and so like for a home you know you're going to see an R16 wall and like an R30 roof in a hive that three quarter inch pine board, you're not even looking at one R. Uh, in a tree, you're looking at probably about a five to six R on the walls, and like I said, an infinite R on the top. And if you know anything about building science, 
60% of your heat load is actually lost through the cap. Something, I mean, the number might be a little off of that, but it's around 60%. And so if you can put your bees in a hive where they're spending less time conditioning the air, um, and as you know, a traditional beehive, we've got this big wide entrance. Some of them have screen bottom boards, and then we have ventilation on top. And so that air comes in through the bottom, that conditioned air that the bees are trying to maintain gets wiped out and pushed right out um, the top of the hive in any sort of, you know, um, inner cover hole that you may have. Um, some people drill holes into their supers. That's another way that you're gonna get that convection. Um, and that's gonna make the bees work way harder than they need to. Uh, a condensing hive actually seals everything up. Uh, it's how we've been running our hives from day one. And it's because I sat down and read study after study after study in regards to hives, hive insulation, how it performs in regards to, uh, or how it compares in regards to different types of hive. One being a insulated wood hive, a standard wood hive, or a polystyrene, which is ultimately what this is. It's a high density polystyrene, so it's very hard. It's not like your typical insulation. It's robust. There's some hard edges here uh, to protect it. Uh, there are other products out there like Apame. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of Apame because it, it's kind of like bridging the gap um, and it's still um, still introduces a lot of ventilation and so there's a downside though to condensing hives and that is that it takes longer for that moisture to get out of the nectar and so therefore some beekeepers won't like it because they're not going to get the honey to ripen as quickly as they would like to however i'm all about the bees take care of the bees they'll take care of you and so uh, we still get good honey crops um, I don't keep necessarily track of the performance one from the other, but uh, like for instance, our host hive, which is where we go and uh, maintain hives for customers. Uh, there are bees, our hives, they've been condensing from day one. We use wooden hives, um, hive bodies, but we custom make the top. Um, and that just sits on top, insulated and completely sealed. Now, there's some disadvantages to doing it that way because you're still sticking, I mean, once again, it's like bridging the gap a little bit. Not quite as bad as like an Apame, if you will. Um, and you can correct me in the comments. I have not physically used an Apame. I've done some research on them, though. And I'm not throwing them under the bus by any means because that's a better choice than woodenware, in my opinion. And scientifically, I guess. You know, people that have done that studies would, would agree with me. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but based off their findings, I would assume they would. Um, and yeah, you know, I would say bees in the springtime build up 20-30% faster based off of them being an insulated hive. And it has to do with the fact that they're not conditioning the air, or they don't have to condition it as easily because once they condition it, it's, it's in the hive. And there's science that shows that a, high, a higher carbon dioxide within a hive actually uh, limits some of the varroa production. So it appears varroa doesn't like CO2. Um, and that moist air um, actually improves the brood, uh, similar to like chicken eggs. I mean, I don't know if you've ever hatched chicken eggs, but they need a certain humidity in order to develop properly and emerge out of their uh, eggs. And it's a bit similar with bees. And so I highly recommend getting a insulated hive. You don't have to buy them from me, buy them from someone else. Um, we do have Hive IQ at one of the cheapest rates uh, on the market uh, because we, we plan on moving quite a few of them. We know the science behind it um, because that's what we use. And so if someone wants to order a Hive IQ, certainly feel free to reach out to us on our website, kinnybees.com. They're under the beekeeper tab. Uh, I think they, I'm not sure if the, I don't remember what menu they're under in the beekeepers, but if you look under beehives, I believe they're sitting under there. But either way, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to cover assembling one of these. We're going to show it off. Uh, this is the base. Uh, you can buy kits, you can buy supers, you can buy bodies, you can buy all the accessories you can. There is some, um, um, well, words escaping my mind here, um, some assembly required, if you will. So 
let's jump into the uh, base and the top. So this here is the high vibe two base and top. It's a nine frame, and that's so that we can keep kind of the width down a little bit. It's a little bit longer than the standard high, and it fits standard frames. They don't come with frames, but um, I mean, first impressions, however, this top is freaking cool. It's metal. It's uh, aluminum and it's pressed. It fits the top. There's some weight to it. There's no way the wind's blowing this off without tipping your whole hive over. Um, so we'll go through some of the installation uh, as after we're done pulling this through. Here's a queen excluder. They're super cool. They actually sit within the hive or the hive body itself. Uh, recessed fits in there beautifully um, there's a little bit of wiggle room not much uh, that will keep the queen from going up any higher than you'd like it to so your queen excluder and then there's some screws for putting this together we'll go through that in a second now the bottom board has is fully vented and so if you think of it now the wind has some access to it but it's not a lot um, let's see if we can pull out the base here Some of the entrance something like you can this it's this really thought through product in regards to like you can close off the whole thing you know open up the whole thing just have you know two sides open we'll go through that in a second anyways this is the base and so you can see there would be some airflow here 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 on the side some here and then a little bit in front and so what ends up happening is like a hot air balloon You've got a cavity, it's completely sealed. As the bees condition that air, it's warm. And so that warm air rises and it's gonna wanna stay in the hive. And the base gives the ability for the bees to absolutely control all aspects of that air. And so you're gonna get a little turbulence on the bottom of the hive, which is gonna exchange some air, a minimal amount. And if the bees really wanna start fanning, one of the things that was found in these studies is the bees actually can create in a condensed hive situation, they actually create, um, um, get the technical terminology, but ultimately they're fanning in a specific direction. So rather than, I mean, we all seen it in front of the hive where the bees are sitting there, you know, fanning air into the hive to get some more air movement, um, which actually reminds me of another aspect of the insulated hive, which we'll talk about here in a second, but, um, it gives them the ability to draw any air up and down as necessary. So they have full control ultimately. Um, but one of the things that I often see and the thing I wanted to talk about, I just remembered here, is that um, insulation isn't just for winter. It's as much for summer as it is for winter. Just the same as insulated house. You know, an insulated house in the summertime helps contain that cool air that you're paying money for and putting energy into no different than the bees or no different than the bees except for in this situation the bees are using honey uh, and calories to expel that heating and cooling and the heating could be in the winter time for instance flexing those flight muscles to generate heat within the hive that requires calorie intake and so anyone that says that bees running around in your hive not clustered uses up more honey reserves that's absolutely incorrect um, bees can access i mean they're going to be able to access more honey because they're not going to need to stay in a tight closure i've seen so many hives where you know bees would have survived but they refuse to break cluster because the honey's you know an inch away and if they break cluster it's too cold the outside of the shell of that cluster is freezing they've only got seconds to be away from that cluster without dying so once they hit around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, they succumb to death. And so, you know, a hive, it might be 10 degrees outside. Well, the inside of that shell of that hive is probably coated with ice and frost just from the condensation. That hot, moist air that the colony is generating hits that cold surface and freezes. In an insulated hive, that doesn't happen because the interior walls are just about the exact same temperature as um, the colony itself. And so in building science, they refer to that, that position where that hot moist air turns, you know, ultimately, um, 
switches form, you know, goes from a gas to a liquid, in this case, water, um, that actually, that point is somewhere in the insulation wall. And so the air can never intermix with itself, and that's how you end up with that R value. And so I honestly believe that we are at a point as beekeepers, this, you know, we can thank YouTube for this, you know, we got lots of people out there saying the same thing I am, backed by science, and it's not just my opinion. Uh, in fact, I'll include some of those scientific links in the description below. Uh, while you're at it, you know, this takes a lot of resources uh, to put these videos together. If you please like and subscribe the video, I would so gratefully appreciate it. It helps me grow it. Uh, we don't make any money on the channel yet. Uh, we're about 150 subscribers away from doing that. That would be wonderful because then we'd be able to provide you more content um, and dedicate some resources to providing consistent content as well. And so um, we're going to put this thing together. I'm going to test it out. We'll do some uh, trials with it as well. We'll make some additional videos. Um, and so uh, thanks for, for watching this and let's get into the hives.